Hey, it's DJ Mojo. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to update your Ape Labs fixtures and also show you how to work them with sound switch. Now, if you already know me, I have several videos already out there on sound switch and on Ape Labs, but this is going to be an updated version, 2023 version, and just want to update you on what I had to do to make sure that my lights are up to date and answer a lot of your questions that I've been receiving in my comments in past videos about how to work the Ape Labs with sound switch. So if you own Ape Labs, if you love sound switch or want to know how to pair these lights or use these lights in, in case you're planning on getting them, watch this video and I hope this video is going to be helpful for you as you update your lights and show you how it works with sound switch. So stay around in this video and stay till the very end um, so you have a, a thorough understanding of how this works. And if you have any questions about anything, you're more than welcome to ask your question down in the comments below. And also there is a sound switch user Facebook group that you can go online as well. But anyhow, let's begin with the video and I hope this helps. Yo, what is up? It is DJ Mojo, Saving the City One Party at a Time. I am making a video update on my Ape Labs Maxis, and I'm gonna share with you exactly how to update your light fixtures. I've had these Ape Lab Maxis for about like six years now. It's been a while. I think I got them back in 2017 or so. And one of the things that I haven't done yet is like updating the firmware. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what you need to make this happen. So if you are interested, stay around. All right, let's begin. What we have going on here is my Ape Light Maxi. I'm using Sound Switch right here. I have my iPad. This is uh, an older generation of the iPad. And I have my uh, W app right there, which they now call this guy the Connect. So the first thing you have to do is you have to update the app itself. What it looks like here is that that icon. So if you go to the app store and just type in Ape Labs, you will be able to find this and you will see it as Ape Labs Connect 2. Going back here and you need to update this app. And you want to, once you have this update, first of all, update your iPad and then update the app. And then you want to update the Connect. So the connect, um, it tells you, I already did the installation. So this is the, the latest, which is 3.2.3. .3. It used to be called W app, but now they changed the, the word to connect. So all you have to do is right here, um, you just have to press and hold this button right here until th these group lights, and there are four group lights until they change colors. They'll alternate from like one and three to two and four it'll alternate red colors like that. And then a button will pop up and all you have to do is just hit update and then it will update. And there's like a progress bar that you will be able to see. And it but once it's updated, it will shut off. And it will tell you that you've updated to the latest firmware version for your Connect. Okay, so now we've updated the app, we've updated the Connect which is this guy right here. And by the way, if, uh, if I wasn't really clear, this connects, uh, basically it communicates to all the other Ape Labs products. All right, so we did that. Now it is time to update the lights. So you go to here and then you get to choose the device group. And there's a list of Ape Labs products. I currently own the Maxis, which I've had for a very long time. And there's the Ape Sticks XL, which I recently got not too long ago but they have all these other products that you can update. So for example, right next to me are my Ape Lights Maxis. I go right here to the battery. I've already updated these and these are still, and these still need to be updated. So I'm gonna give you a live demonstration. So you choose the light fixture and then you want to, and there's instruction, it is very clear, so you don't have to guess, guess about what you're doing. I love the user interface of it and how easy it is to do it. So the first thing that you wanna do, well, first of all, I already updated this. I'm gonna share with you what I'm currently doing right now on Sound Switch. And what's really great about these products is, is that they, it keeps it very, very simple. There's only one button that you press, which is this guy. 
Once you see a button like this, this is the only button. It, t it powers it on and depending on if you hold it long enough, it will enable a different setting. So I turn it on. It's flickering on camera, but it's not uh, in person. Okay, now it's flickering blue, blue and white. All right, so what you wanna do and then is hit start update and there'll be another progress bar just like that. Now, um, I'm going to do a real time thing. What's really cool about these lights is that there are service mode settings where you can enable different things. Flicker free mode. I just turn that on and we'll exit that. So I am running this camera on 60 frames per second. It's not flickering. Like if you're looking at the, the light itself, it's not flickering. I think it's only if you look at it closely enough. I don't know if, if that's something that matters for you, but when you shine it against something, it's not flickering. I'm trying to reproduce that, that flickering effect. And, you know, let's play around with it. I mean, these lights shouldn't flicker, but I'm gonna turn it off. This is the little bonus experiment here. Going into service mode, it will flash blue and white, and then go to service mode settings. Uh, I'm curious, flicker free mode off. And then exit service mode. All right, let's see what, what that happens. Oh. Ooh, that's really bad. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you had the flicker free mode off. You see that? That's pretty bad. So it's not on the light. It's like, it's when you look at it. Okay, that's really bad. But if you go, let's do it again. Let's see the difference. Go back to service mode. Oh, that's, I guess it really depends on the angle of how the camera is like looking at it. Watch. See, that's really bad. So I'm gonna go, oops. I wanna go back to service mode. Wait till it's blue and white. There it is. All right, service mode, flick your free mode on. There it is, exit service mode. Now let's take a little look again. Hmm. Very, very minimal. I mean, this is if you have your light directly on it and I'm kind of curious to see what other factors it comes into play. I mean, it's not as noticeable as the, the previous one. So just a heads up, I want to be more transparent with you. I mean, as if you're like look, pointing your camera at the light directly and, and recording this at 60 frames per second. But in most cases, when I mean, I've never had a problem from, I never heard a, a complaint from a photographer, videographer about my light. So this is just maybe just something if you point your camera directly at it. But there was a huge significant difference compared to having it off. So those are my two cents. I mean, no problems, like I haven't had any complaints like I mentioned, so I'm not too worried about that. But the next thing I want you to do, so just a quick recap, we've updated the app, we've updated the connect, we've updated the lights. Now it is time to set up the lights to pair up with your sound switch software. I'll show you that right now. Hey, it's Joe, DJ Mojo. I've been where you are, passionate about DJing, dreaming of making it my full-time career. And guess what? I did it. Now I'm here to help you reach that same goal, especially in the wedding scene. It's called Wedding DJ Mastery Elevated, a community where we connect every week on coaching calls. I'll be sharing the same knowledge and principles that helped me succeed, and together, we'll adapt them to your journey. As a founding member, you get to start with a free seven day trial and then enjoy a special discounted rate. Join now and I'll see you inside. Now back to the video. All right, what you see right here is my sound switch software. I love this software. I've been using this for a while now and it makes it super easy to create my light shows and program and DMX my lights and it all goes to the beat of my music using Serato DJ. So I already have different lights already in the DMX universe and I've assigned my Ape Light Maxis uh, right over here and it's in channel 30 in the DMX and there's 512 addresses and what's really great about SoundSwitch is that you can really lay it all out and in a picture format so you know how to spread them out. So my Ape Lab Ape light maxis are in eight channel mode. 
And when you click on it, you can determine what DMX address you want it to be. So 30, um, it, it could be anywhere. Like if I really want to, I could put it into 10, 145, anywhere in this space. But I put it right here under 30 and it takes up eight channels. So um, that's why it takes up eight spaces here in the DMX universe. And then the next light starts at DMX address 38. So I have it there. Now it is time to assign my ape lights into uh, that right there to DMX 30. So the first thing you wanna do is go to setup lights and then you want to use this guy, turn it on and it says waiting for a device to be switched on. I'm gonna switch it on and immediately it pops up right here. I didn't have to hold it down that long. It automatically goes into the service mode. You can choose any of these groups here and I'm gonna show you how that works later, but I like to keep things like group two, no, no particular reason. And then you have these different DMX options mode. Uh, I set it up in sound switch to have it eight channels. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I choose it to eight. Uh, it has other DMX modes. I haven't messed around with that, but I figured more, more channels, the better, more control. And then select DMX address. So I want to match that DMX address to what I have right here. So I'm going to bring this up to 30. There it is. DMX address 30. I hit apply. So watch, watch what happens when I hit apply. It'll flash just a little bit and then it will change into a solid color. There we go. And then I just have to do that with my next one. And what's really great about these kind of lights is that you are able to update the firmware uh, with the app and with the uh, connect. So I just have to do that for all of the lights. Now I'm turning this back off, going to the setup lights and watch this. When I turn it back on, it saved my settings and I'm good to go, all right? And I can just turn it off. Now, so we set up with sound switch. What is next? The next thing is to do is like, I'm gonna share with you uh, how it all comes to play when you are DJing and, and performing at your event. All right, so I am using sound switch and I'm in the edit mode right now. Several things need to happen first before you can uh, take this on the road as you DJ. So we make sure that our lights are in check, our so sound switch software is up to, up to date, and now it's time to connect everything. So one of the things that you wanna do first is turn on the light. There we go. And this is my sound switch uh, control one. I have it right here. I'm using a wireless transmitter. And uh, this is the dongle we can get on Amazon. And then it's connecting to a receiver back here on the back of my connect, right over here. So I want sound switch, which I, which I already set it up right here. And I already have some uh, auto loop that I have going on here. It's gonna send the signal from sound switch to the transmitter. So this is a DMX, okay? And then it will input the signal into here. And then this will communicate to all of my Ape Labs devices. So we got that down. The next thing I want you to do is on the app itself, go to DMX transmitter right over here and choose the group, group two, and then enable transmitter. All right, so that's what's currently right now. When I hit enable transmitter, now let's test it out. All right, so I click anywhere here. And then, so if you check at the colors to let me know that it's working, it should alternate white and blue. All right, so here we go. Yep, it is working. So that's the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that before you you go to your show or to your DJ performance that all your lights are working beforehand, which I'm currently doing right now. So that's how you make that work. Hope that was useful. And then I'm gonna share with you one more thing just to ensure that your whole lighting software uh, is working with not just the Ape Labs, but also using sound switch. I'm, I'm killing lots of birds with one stone here. All right, so we've already established that there is a connection between sound switch and the lights that I'm using, which are the Ape Lights Maxis. Now, this is like a little a bonus clip right here that I'll be sharing with you. So uh, now it is time to perform as a DJ. Uh, I already have Serato DJ up right here. And 
The first thing that you want to do is go to sound switch, go to file, go to switch mode and switch it into perform, performance mode. And I have it set up as my main setup. Now it should look something like this. Now go back to Serato. Now, if you already have a track loaded up, it may not work right away. So what you want to do is load up a different track, go in the right. And if you still notice that it may or may not work, then one of the things I want you to do, well, actually, I think now it's working automatically. Once we load up the new track, we updated the lights, we updated the firmware and everything else. Because previously what I had to do, and I still would recommend you do this, is go to the settings on the top right in Serato, go to MIDI, and then make sure that you choose the control one out of the MIDI, MIDI devices, because this control one is your MIDI device for for this guy. So your input, whatever you do here, will show over here. So I have everything down. That's why it is dark. Um, here, let's, let's do this. Maybe I'll move this. I'm gonna move my light closer to my controller so you can see the effects. There it is. So I'm gonna raise it up. All right. And then I can, let's see here, go to white. Strobe. So I have different things I can do. And this is one of the presets that I have. Um, if I wanna slow things down, I can. So these are all the auto loops. So there's a lot of things I'm showing you here today. Just wanna give you a little thing and that's strobe that I'm doing right now. And you can control your strobe speed, but this is awesome. So we figured it out, we updated it, it's working, it's going well. And then I can change it to a different color if I want by hitting any of these buttons, it, now it goes red. Or if I want some kind of green or greenish blue, really hard to see from this camera or some purple right here. All right. So that's one of the tips I have for you in case you're having some troubleshooting issues, go to MIDI and then sound switch control one and just make sure that you load up a new track um, to one of your decks. All right. But here, but number one thing is make sure everything is updated. Everything is connecting and working before you load, go to Serato DJ. I um, just wanted to make sure that all everything in the chain is working. Hey, thanks so much for watching that video. If you enjoy that video, I have other videos up here on Ape Labs and also on Sound Switch. So check those videos out if you're interested. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.